Hi everybody. So, you decided to do something visually intensive on the browser, and now you're faced with a difficult question. Do you implement that using your DOM, or do you implement that using the Canvas? And this is a very common question that gets asked many times, and I haven't found too many good answers for this. So I figured this video and the associated article will hopefully help demystify some of the things surrounding when to use which. So let's get started. So to talk about the DOM and talk about the canvas and when you should use which, we need some background information. So let's take a few steps back. In fact, let's take many steps back. Let's look at the two approaches your browser uses to get things drawn on the screen. And these two approaches are retain mode and the immediate mode. And let's look at what each of these modes does. And in learning about them, you'll get a better idea of what the DOM and the canvas do as well. So let's start with the retain mode. The retain mode is what your DOM uses. And this is an approach where you have a graphics API and all you do is pass some instructions to the API and the API takes care of everything for you. It takes care of positioning elements, it takes care of dealing with occlusions and all the various things that you, know, you take for granted, it, the graphics API just handles for you. Here's a visualization of what this looks like. So you have a system where your application is yellow box right here. You have your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And after that, everything else is handled by the API itself. And something that's crucial to how retaining mode systems work is that they not only end up translating what you have into something you see in the browser, but they have an intermediate step. They have an in-memory model of everything that needs to be drawn, everything that needs to be maintained, so that you can actually synchronize very quickly with the final output. And that model has many names. It's often known as the scene, the display list, or the object list. So if you ever see those terms used in any kind of a graphics art article you're reading, just keep that in mind, it's a retain mode system, and referring to this in-memory model that contains a, a translated version of what you created and a, a near final version of what needs to be displayed in the browser. And an example of a retain mode system is, like I mentioned, everything you create using the DOM. So for example, here I have, in this case, a, a very simple content slider that's defined largely in HTML and CSS, with a little bit of JavaScript to handle interactivity. And if I were to, for example, just inspect what this particular you know, blue box looks like, notice that the box is a rectangle, but the way I define it is by essentially having some CSS and define the height to be, in this case, 350 pixels, and in this case, the, you know, the width to be 550. So I never at any point that I have to define the exact dimensions or the starting point of the box itself in whatever arcane command is needed to draw it in the browser. I just wrote plain and simple CSS, the graphics API took care of translating this into whatever it needs to be to display in the browser in the way I want to look like. So that is a retain mode system where things are taken care of for you. So to contrast the, the friendliness of the retain mode system, you have the immediate mode. And that is the mode that your canvas primarily subscribes to. And this mode, there is no easy way out of it. You do all the heavy lifting. You not only specify what needs to be drawn, you also create, maintain the in-memory model, and you also specify the draw commands and ensure that you, the screen is updated, and you write all the code needed for, for that. And the, the chart and the visualization of the immediate mode looks kind of like this. It's not really too complex because everything is handled by you. Your application, you probably write the code for it, and then you also write the code for maintaining the in-memory scene and model, and you also issue the draw commands. These are draw commands that go, in this case, with Canvas API, and then the Canvas API just displays it in the browser. You don't really control this part of the equation too much, but everything else, what gets drawn, how it gets drawn, and how it displays on the screen, all that is handled for you. And here's an example of something like that. So here I have a bunch of circles moving around, and you know, they're animated, they're moving around this little box right here. If we were to take a look at like, what exactly you see, Notice that you know, in the HTML, all you really see is just the canvas element. That's it, you have your head tag, your body, and the canvas element. That is all you see here. And that's not really, uh, that's not really much because everything else is defined entirely, in this case, code, where I'm writing a lot of code. Here I'm defining the circle itself. Think of this as the in-memory model of where you're trying to create, where you define all the various properties of what gets shown up there. For example, you can see the, the color that I'm filling into this. And also here's where I'm doing the begin path arc and the various canvas commands to actually draw the circle on the screen. I'm not just saying draw circle, I'm actually defining the various paths and colors that need to make up a circle in very primitive, in a very primitive way. 
and then I'd write some more code to basically draw an update and do other things to make this happen. So essentially, whereas in the you know in the DOM world, I might have had to do very little. I might have just had to say draw these you know hundred circles or fifty circles, however many there are, and animate them. In this case, I do not only that, but also define what the circles look like. And the actual DOM you know equivalent is just a canvas element. Really, nothing there to help me out beyond that. So now that you've seen like an overview of what the immediate mode and retain mode systems provide and bring to the table, let's just take a look at some pros and cons of each. So you have a you know, have some more of a summary on which one to go with. So let's start with the DOM. So as you saw, the DOM is easy to use. You're just writing friendly HTML and CSS and occasionally some JavaScript, but that's all you do. You just define things in a language you're familiar with, mostly English, and what gets drawn for you is just handled automatically. Redrawing is handled for you. You don't have to worry about updating the screen or clearing a region when you're moving something around or trying to change your current visual tree. You know, number three, CSS, of course, everyone loves CSS. And if you ever want to delve into animation, creating animations using the DOM is very, very nice because all of the redrawing is handled for you. Of course, the downside of the DOM is that it is memory intensive. As you saw earlier when I was inspecting the DOM, you have a lot of elements, you have a lot of HTML. Creating an in-memory model of exactly what you want to draw is not cheap. And oftentimes, the, in this case, the HTML API, it contains a lot of functionality, a lot of properties, a lot of things that you need to toggle that you might not, might not even care about. But as part of subscribing to the graphics API, you get all that extra baggage for free. So it's a little bit more memory intensive. And you also have less control. The way the browser render things, the way they get things displayed is pretty much fixed in the graphics API world. If you want to bypass, like you want to do your own custom work, you really can't do that. You know, you have to give some of that up for the conveniences the DOM really provides. Now with the canvas, it is fast. It is really fast. That's one of its biggest advantages because you're not maintaining, you, you maintain exactly however much you want to maintain to get something drawn on the screen. So in this case, all I'm maintaining to, for this example again is just the bare minimum needed to get the circles to display. I don't care about anything else about them. There are no features on dealing with input, no touch, none of that. It's all just displayed for getting a circle to more on the screen. And little things like that help make it really fast. And you have great flexibility. You can draw however you want. You can use whatever API you want. You can use a third-party library if you care. There are no right or wrong ways to issue these draw commands as long as they get issued in some way. The JavaScript, your browser, doesn't really care how it gets there. And of course, it's also perfect for dealing with many, many elements because it goes kind of back to the first point about being fast, but also ties back into not having to have an in-memory model that the, that the browser maintains for you. you. You can actually help optimize that to a large extent, which allows you to have many elements without all the overhead that you might have with a DOM element. Of course, the downside is you know no solution is perfect. The canvas is kind of slow. It is slow when drawing to large areas because you're also doing the repainting and updating yourself. If you aren't really doing a good job optimizing for when to update or when to refresh your screen, you might find yourself refreshing the entire screen, often unnecessarily, and that causes a, a massive slowdown. So it is not entirely a negative, but it's a negative if you aren't gonna be very careful about it. So with the canvas, you have a lot more room for mistakes, whereas the DOM is a little bit more constrained. And the last one's kind of obvious, it is it is more complex. You know, instead of just saying, you know, circle with 300, 350 and height 550, you know, whatever the values we used earlier, you actually had to define everything yourself. You're not have to, you have to think about how the values get there, but how to convert those into the commands to actually draw them onto the canvas, which is ultimately what you see on the screen. So there's a little bit of complexity involved. And once you start talking about like creating UI elements, dealing with input and focus and keyboard, all these things we take for granted in DOM world, then the complexity really, really ratchets up. So be aware of that. So with that, you just saw an overview of when to use the DOM and when to use the canvas. And as you see, there's no clear cut winner in either of these cases, but for the most part, I tend to use whichever makes the most sense. If I'm dealing with input, if I'm dealing with things that requires accessibility, dealing with layout, it's like a natural flow, I use the DOM. The DOM brings you all this functionality for free. Yes, there's overhead, but it is also much more convenient. I spend more time thinking about the content that goes in the page or the, the UX of how these things flow, as opposed to dealing with re-rendering and recreating all these primitive controls that have been around for many, many years. And of course, I'm creating games or creating something that is more of a complex visualization that has less interactivity and just more of pixels being drawn to the screen. And 
oftentimes there's a lot of them going around, I use the canvas. The canvas is great for many things, great for visualizations, and great for drawing things very quickly, as you saw in the previous slide. So I use the canvas for all those things that DOM is just really, really well suited for. So with that, we're done with this particular video. You can learn more by going to group.com. There are many videos and articles all about animation, the DOM, the canvas, and all that other good stuff. If you need any help, just post in the forums at forum.krupa.com. And you can also you know, grab a hold of me anywhere online. I'm on Twitter, at Krupa, at Facebook, and on YouTube. So just ping me and I'll get back to you very quickly. And if you found this particular video interesting, by all means, check out my book, Animation in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where I touch upon this topic, as well as many topics that go further, talking about how to animate in the DOM or animate using the canvas. So definitely check it out if you're in the area. And the area is Amazon.com, where you can find it in paperback and Kindle editions. All right, guys. See you guys next time.